In this video we'll show you how to uh, import a DXF file directly into the CAM system for turning. Uh, so I've started the Partmaster CAM from the desktop so I'll go to import a DXF drawing and the one I'm going to choose is this one here. Right now a DXF file doesn't contain any information about the units so we need to know what units it was created in. So in this case we're working in inches. Okay so that's the uh, shape that's come in. Now it's important that when you are creating the DXF file it only contains the lines arcs that you need. Uh, so get rid of any duplicated lines, get rid of all the extraneous stuff and the system will automatically create the profile for you. Uh, so that's the geometry come in but uh, we need to make sure that it's a profile for turning. <coughs> so if we go up to view, geometry info, click here and go modify, then we change that to a profile for turning. Is it okay to change that? We say yes. Now once we've done that you'll notice that it automatically flips the geometry uh, above and below the center line. With the cursor in the drawing area if we right click the mouse we get uh, a display options menu. So if we choose enhance profiles we get some nice lines which look more like a turned part. Uh, now we'll need to check where our datum position is. Currently it's on the bottom left hand side here which is probably not the best place so we want to put it here. So to change that we go into setup and we go to origin and we're going to change the NC origin. Now if we know the length of the component we can just type in the value here but if we don't know it we can choose it with the cursor. So we choose this button here. Now the position that it's going to choose as a default will be wherever the cursor happens to be but I want to snap on to the end point here so I right click the mouse and choose my snap mode to near a line or arc end okay so you can now see that the cursor is snapping onto the end point of the line and that's where the datum needs to be so it tells me that's the size there 6.6305 and if I want to align that position for the new geometry, I check that box there. So that moves my datum to the front face of the job there. So <coughs> now I'll define some tools. Uh, so go to define a tool. So the first tool we'll define will be a standard 80 degree insert with a uh, 0.0315 uh, tip radius, but you can change the tip radius to whatever you like. Click OK. Select that tool for use. Here we set up the spindle speed and the feed rate. If you want to use constant surface speed, this is where we do it. And we set up the speed in feet per minute and the maximum that the spindle can run at. And the feed rate is the feed rate that you want, normally feed per rev. So 1.25. If we want the coolant to be switched on, that's where we check at the box. Sorry, if you want feed per rev, that's what I should have had. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so that's defined and selected the tool. Now I need to issue a machining instruction. So the one that we'll use first is a rough turning. So for that, it needs the cycle limits. So this is the maximum and minimum Z and X point. So I can either enter the values if I know them, or I can choose them with the cursor. So that sets up the bottom right hand corner of where I'm going to start machining and this sets up the top left hand corner. Now it's not going to reach that position because it will see that the profile uh, is in its way. It's an external cycle and we're turning towards the chuck. If we want to leave a finishing allowance we can do that in Z and in X and then we can set the depth of cut that we want here. So we click OK Right, so that machines that, but you can see how the tool will try to machine as much as possible. So if I switch into animate mode and run the uh, animation, we can see how it's trying to machine as much as it's possible to machine given the tool geometry. If we want it to stop doing that, we double click on this 
uh, operation here and go to options and check the box stay out of undercuts so now it machines that but it doesn't try to machine anything else okay so now we can define maybe uh, a different tool to machine out the bulk of this area here so we go back to defining a tool so we might use something like a uh, VNMB uh, which is a 55 degree tip and we need to set the primary angle which is measured from the zero which is the three o'clock position round to the front face of the tool so if you take 270 as being the line here then it's going to be 27 and a half uh, away from that which is 2.2.5 okay uh, now you'll notice where the tool tip is in relation to where the zero is so if we want to move the zero position of the tool to the tip there we just set our z offset to zero so this is needs to tie up with the zero position that you're going to set your tool on the machine so you might have your tool set as being the outside edge here in which case you need to measure your tool to find out the distance between that edge and the uh, center of the uh, tool tip the tool is in our case approaching from the front and it's mounted on a front turret stroke tool post so now we select that tool for use it remembers all the speeds and feeds that we used previously so we can use those or we can type in something new so now what we need to do is to decide the order that we're going to machine this so we'll use a turning cycle again and this time I'll just machine this detail here okay now we'll do the same thing again but machine this detail here and again whenever I'm doing this I can enter the finishing allowance and I can change my cut depths as I need to and now we'll do the main area in the middle here and again if we need to I can always go back and change any of this so there's no problem if I do make a mistake I just want to go back and change things okay so that's machined out the bulk of it but obviously there's going to be some areas here that it hasn't machined with that tool uh, so what I might like to do is to uh, use a grooving type tool before I do that I'll need to know the span numbers of these spans so that I can isolate the machine in just a certain areas with the cursor in the graphics area if I right click them out go to display option sorry uh, number spans is what I want okay so that's numbered all the spans for me right so let's define ourselves a grooving tool uh, whatever width you want it to be and define the uh, set the spindle speed and the feed rate uh, so for that what I want to do is I want to use profile turning which is a finishing operation so we're going to machine that contour but under the options tab if I just slide that box out I just need to start machining span number 8 and just go to span 9 so in here partial machining start at span 8 finish at span 9 now what I might also want to do is to add on some approach and runoff so if I have a parallel approach and of say 0.1 and maybe a normal runoff 0.1 okay so that just machines that now I could do the same profile turning but this time under the options I want to go from 21 to 22 but I'm going to do it in the reverse direction so keep the span numbers as they appear on the screen 21 to 22 if I need to I can set the approach and runoff and I can leave the finishing allowance okay so that just machines down through there and then comes back straight back out uh, now if I wanted to go back and change this one and have no runoff then I can do that. No 
Now when I'm running the toolpath at any time, if I click run, then it obviously animates all the operations here. But if I want to just temporarily switch some off, then I can just click on the tick mark and turn it into a cross. And then it just machines the uh, parts that are active. Now if I wanted to go back and use my finishing tool, tool number two, or a finishing equivalent of that, then I can do that. But if I just want to use the same tool again, I just say reselect tool number two. And now I can do a profile turning operation to complete the job. Uh, so I might want a an approach. So it's going to start off at that corner there. So approach here would be a parallel approach. 0.125 and maybe a normal runoff normal as in 90 degrees to the direction of travel and under options I want to start at span number 2 and finish, finish at span 30 ok so that's machined that now where the tool is now I'd need to send the tool back to its home position so to do that I use the go to command so I send the tool to its home position but what I want to make sure of is it moves in the x-axis first before the z. So it pulls off in the x-axis before it goes home in the z. And that's that job completed. If we needed to part it off we would just uh, use that same grooving tool or a different tool and issue the part off command and that basically just parts off but obviously I'd need to make sure I've got the right tool selected before I do that. If I do make a mistake and I get the order of things in the wrong order here I simply click and drag it into the correct position and I switch on all of these operations and run the job. switch on there. Okay, uh, the other thing that we could do of course is to set up a billet. So we can give it a diameter, maybe 2.75. The length can stay as it is. There is no bore and the Z position of the fillet, uh, billet is zero. Now I go into tool envelope mode. Just switch that down a little bit. And then we can see exactly how that's being machined. So the important thing with uh, reading DXF files directly into the CAM system is to make sure that the DXF file only contains the information you want. If you don't do that you have to go through and um, define each line that you want to make up the profile so it's much easier just to give yourself a very clean DXF file. Okay, that's it.